Welcome to the world of tech to teach devices. Tech to teach devices bring a whole new world of possibilities, a new vision to education. The easiest way to connect to your device is to go through Windows S, press Windows on your keyboard and S, and then type in CAM for camera, C A M, and you can see now my camera app. I'm going to open that so I can access the camera on this laptop. I'm using a laptop. Open should open my camera and it will link up automatically to my Tech to Teach device. This should work the same on all PCs. Doing that automatically connects up to the visualizer. There you're seeing the camera icon and it's loading, so it should automatically connect. The camera is pointing at an old textbook that I'm using. There we go. Ship direction. And you've got a compass. Just going to use this old book to show you how you would interact with this part of your educational technology. In this particular case, we're using the Windows camera on a laptop. These tech to teach devices do not even need a PC. You can connect them to any visual display unit. All you'll need to do is connect them with the USB, the VGA cable, the HDMI, and that'll get you connected. So just experiment and try connecting it up to your high definition television set or your whiteboard in your classroom and you're away without even a PC. Online teaching has brought a whole lot of new challenges and approaches to education. So I wanted to show you how you'd use this device in Microsoft Teams. So I'm going to open up Microsoft Teams. We know that it's Windows S. So I'm going to use that shortcut to access Win Microsoft Teams. Windows S. Open up Teams. Open. And you'll see we're going to now call a meeting. And you can see that something will be shown over here. And you'll notice that everything's back to front. If I had to open up the meeting, this would be a lesson. I'm opening up a lesson. Look at that. Everything is back to front. So my camera is showing an image as if it was a mirror. This is largely because the video cam or the webcam on your computer would normally be used to give a mirror-like image. In Microsoft Teams, your students will see everything the right way around. It will not be mirrored. So it's very important that when you're teaching using this, you'll need to focus on the paper under the eye of your tech to teach camera. And don't get confused by the back to front writing on your screen. Let's show how you can avoid this mirror image. And we will once again go to the camera. So I'm going to go Windows S, type in CAM for camera. I'm going to open the camera. And here's my laptop's camera once again. And there we have our image, and you can see the writing is the right way around. It is not mirrored. And there we've got ship direction. Let's open Microsoft Teams. So here we go. Open. We are going to feed the default camera image into Microsoft Teams using shared desktop to avoid the mirror effect. An easy way to project your camera. I'm going to call another meeting. And you can see, look, I have not got that image that's back to front coming in. So I'm setting up a meeting access the camera via the desktop in Microsoft Teams. So let's do that. I'm going to go to share screen and you can see on the left hand side it says desktop. I'm going to click on that. I want to share my desktop and then I open up the camera and there we go. In Microsoft Teams you'll see there's a little red line on the edge of my screen. You might be able to see that. That's indicating that I'm sharing my screen with the camera viewpoint Whatever you write can now be displayed on the whiteboard or in Microsoft Teams. So you can write that in correct. All right, so that's the correct way of seeing it. It's not back to front. You can present your lessons in a similar way in Zoom, Cisco WebEx, Google Meet, or any of those sort of platforms. In this particular example, we're just sharing the camera viewpoint from Microsoft Teams. Let's just explore the LOM software that comes with your Tech to Teach device. This software comes with your Tech to Teach device, so you would install it on your machine. So here I'm just turning the wheel to zoom in, and then I can drag to move my viewpoint around. Clicking on the buttons below over here opens different functions. Right clicking would take them away, so if I right click over there, everything goes away. 
So we got inversion and inverted colors. If I click on that, you can see that's an inversion of the colors. We got grayscale, grayscale, and we also have black line. It's quite clear how this could easily feed into creative art projects. That's something that can be explored in the future. I'm going to show you how black line can get a good scan in optical character recognition. The pause button over there is just to halt the video. So if you press that, everything becomes a lot clearer. Do you notice that there's less flicker on the screen? The pause button makes everything far more static. There are different models which allow you to focus on text, image, or text and image. They are called models and are found in the models button. So if I click on this button over here with the M, click on that, it says models. When that opens, you can either focus on text mode, or compatibility mode, which is text and images, or you can just focus on taking scans of images alone. The required outcome will determine which model you're going to use. For example, if you're only requiring the text, then you will choose the text model. So you need to experiment with that. The next button allows you to manipulate the different color settings. I'm using black line and by binarization, I'm bringing in and it's picking up on the different shadows. All right, and you can zoom in. If you click on that button, you zoom right in and that would take it out. This is particularly useful when you wanna focus in and draw the person's attention to some area on the, on the page. I use it very often when doing annotation and teaching. And this button will allow you to access the whole image. So if I click over there, you can see it's accessing the whole image. And that one brings it in actual size. All right. And you can manipulate and rotate the images with this one at 90 degree intervals. And there's a protractor. So you can just move the image at smaller intervals. You can choose what degree you want to move it. So I'm just going to reset it to where it was. And there's the protractor. Just get it right takes a bit of practice to get that right and there we go in most cases of scanning you're going to want to isolate the area you want to scan so you're going to click on that and you're going to select an area to scan you can see those little green squares that are indicating the area and i'm going to ocr optical character recognize in microsoft word i'm going to just save it now imagine this to be a worksheet i'm saving it and i'm going to just quickly open it microsoft word and we're going to just have a look at how the scan optically character recognized. And you can see the text is almost always, almost correct. There's a few, and it's even brought the image in because I used one of the models, which was the compatibility model. The compatibility model captures the text as well as the image in the scan. A minor bit of editing would need to be done on the document. Though the more you practice with the settings, the better you'll get. Let's scan the text of a document as a PDF. So let's just first select the area we want to scan. So I'm going to drag all the way down to show the area that is going to be part of our scan. So I'm scanning all the way down to the bottom. It's not entirely clear, but you will see there's those green handles, those squares that show the area we want to scan. Now we're going to save it as a PDF. So I'm choosing PDF file and let's give it a name. OCR PDF save. That's optically character recognizing the text in the document. We're going to have a good look at the document and see what it looks like. So let's open that document. There's the PDF and maximize it. The scan looks really good. It's pretty much like the original document. I'm really impressed with the PDF scan. Let's just try to select some of that text. So if I drag over this, you can see it's editable. You can copy it. In this video, I'll still show you how to mark PDFs. I'd like to show you how to automate your scans. So if you click on that one over there, it just takes an automatic picture, which is stored in the default folder. Here you can see all my different scans. It's the folder that shows all the different scans. In a moment, I'll show you how to set intervals on your scans. We can also do a scan when we sense a page change scans. All right, now if you go to this one over here on the right hand side, you'll see that automatically the software will pick up the page and you can even record. So if I go to recording over here, I can set the screen, the area I'd like to do a video recording. 
we access this recording capability in, in the settings section. It's shown by those three little dots. And this goes well with annotation, where you just press that button and it would be recording that particular part in an MP4 file. How will you get to the video recording? Well, you're going to go to settings and settings with three little dots, start recording and screen recording. So you've got all these different settings that will allow you to, you'll have to explore them. There's language and here you can actually set the type of file. I've got mine as JPEG and over there, that's where you would store all your images that you've scanned. Some people like to use the on-screen keyboard. So if you click it, you have access to be able to type. I find it quite useful to teach young learners where the different keys are. Sometimes you'd like to compare documents. So you go to compare and you can see there's four different areas. And if you click on the camera, it's gonna open up your tech to teach device. So if I click on there, it's showing that textbook. So if I go to the next area and click on the, it would be showing it once again. Now I can zoom in and out by using the mouse. I just turn the wheel of my mouse. Here I can open up a picture that's on my computer. So I've just got to search through and find the necessary picture. And once you've got that, you can bring it in. And you can see it's the wrong way around, so I'd need to turn it. We'll need to have a 90 degree move to the left, and that orientates it. And you can like compare these, and you can even rearrange the way they're shown on the screen so let's just show you how you do that that's these three points window and you can move around and you can just lay it out on the screen as you'd like it and that gives you the ability to even put in video so all you have to do is go to the compare area and that would allow you to just compare these different areas over there you'd also just screen capture would just allow you to just capture a shot of what's shown on your screen but if you go to scan We've got three different options to automate the capturing process. You can see you can detect when you change the pages, and this will allow us to detect every time we turn a page. So watch there. If I turn a page, watch the red file name and address, you'll see it changes. It's taking a picture every time I turn this page. So I'm going to turn five pages. So I'm turning the page. As I turn it, it takes a picture of the next page. So it's going through every single one of those. Our camera has sensed that the page has changed and then taken a photograph of the new page. I can see how useful this would be when you want to take in children's work. You can just automate, go paperless and start involving yourself in digital marking, which I'll get to in a moment. You might want to take a picture every few seconds. At a given time interval, we'll take a snap of what's been viewed by our camera. So let's go with every five seconds. I'm going to take five photographs every five seconds. So five scans. Watch carefully. Every five seconds, it should be taking a different photograph. So if I turn the page, you'll see it takes and it changes every five seconds. It's taking a photograph. File name is changing every time it takes a new scan. I've speeded up my film, so it's not exactly five seconds. But if I go back to the original page, it's taken five photographs. Let's open the file and have a good look at that. So these are all the pictures taken from my tech to teach device. I'd like us to explore some of the annotation features. So the panel on the right-hand side will allow us to annotate. The annotations are best used when teaching directly from your text to teach device. So you'll be projecting this onto the class and talking, you probably using Microsoft Teams or Google Meets or something like that. You could be feeding your tech to teach device straight to the whiteboard or a high definition TV. And in that case, your device will be taking the role of a 21st century overhead projector. And I'm gonna choose the pen tool, pen one, the second pen two, and that's an arrow, a green arrow. You can change the color over there, put it red, and you can see you have the flexibility to be able to annotate what you are showing on your screen. This is really good for when you're teaching and you want to just show things. So if you circle, there you go. It's just indicating that I'm in magic mode, the magic wand, which means you circle something and when you release your mouse, it disappears. Very, very useful when you want to highlight some area. You can even set the transparency of it. So if I go like that, it's indicating an area. And this is the curtain where you want to cover over certain areas of your work, possibly 
cover over an answer, this curtain becomes quite useful and teachers who are familiar with the whiteboard would know it quite well because most whiteboard software has this. So your tech to teach device brings everything that a whiteboard could bring to the classroom. With a direct connection, you can just connect it to the board, connect it to a high definition television set, and you've got a whiteboard at a quarter of the cost. There's a redo and undo. We're all familiar with what those are. I wanted to show you how to do some digital marking. So I'm going to select the area I'd like to mark. Now I'm going to do an optical character recognition and save it as a PDF file. We'll just call the file drawings. Now this scan will pick up that there's no text in the drawing. And so there will be just a pure image. I'm using Adobe Reader to mark this document, just placing my signature. You can use that handle to make it bigger. You can make your own signature. There's ticks and crosses, which are all quite familiar. Adobe Reader, you can download for free. It's quite easy. You can easily mark the tests and just send them back to the learners digitally via email. And you can see there's even comments that are recorded in Adobe Reader. So you can just repeat some of those comments with a drop down box. I'm just going to move this comment. So zoom in. Just move it to a more adequate spot. I've just put it over there. What is the writing about? Okay, you can just move around, add further details. When you finish, you can just click on save. Your tech to teach device can be used to project pictures which could elicit discussion. Like if you look at this one, it's showing a picture of the development of early Russian education. And you can see these three boys in that picture are in deeply religious kind of gestures and then you've got girls and they're in a totally different position and one could generate a whole lot of discussion around aspects like that you can zoom in you can move around you've got that ability to to offer so much more generating creative input and analyzing seeing the story behind the picture these three little girls definitely seem a bit bored and those boys clearly expressing something of a religious nature. You can see their stance. This book's about Peter the Great and his attempts to try and move Russian education in a more secular direction. His educational program was aiming to modernize the country. Here you've got a picture of Peter the Great. He traveled throughout Europe trying to find out about all forms of knowledge. And here he's studying how to build ships. You can see he's holding a rudder. And if I use the annotation tool, we can point at his arm and the tool. Peter the Great clearly felt that education should be practical and related to the real world. So if you zoom in, you can get a whole lot of input from your learners when you just looking at pictures and analyzing them. I'm sure you can see how this tech to teach device is going to make your teaching far more engaging, creative and inspiring. It's quite easy to just put three-dimensional objects underneath the camera and you can use them. So I'm just going to show you how I would use a vernier and one could use the very same principles when teaching with a protractor or a ruler or something like that. So I'm just placing the vernier in front of us. I'm just going to zoom in on this vernier and we'll see what the thickness of my pen is. I've got it about 300 and you can see it's at 9.5 millimeters you can just place three-dimensional objects under the camera and engage in a study with your class there's so much that we can still show you but i think that we will cover this in future videos because this is only to introduce you to using the device i hope that you've enjoyed this video we look forward to hearing about all the different and exciting ways of using your tech to teach device.